why you should not be a chocolate Christian, or how to change church to church. Have you ever noticed that chocolate melts under pressure and heat? If you haven't, then please do get a piece of chocolate and hold it between your fingers. It will soon melt. If you are a Christian, you need to be active in your local church so that you do not melt under pressure and you will remain firm in your faith. Otherwise you will be a chocolate Christian who easily gives up under the stress and pressure of everyday life. At a church local to where you live, you are needed regardless of who you are. I asked some people why they weren't involved as a committed Christian to their church. And perhaps some of these answers are similar to yours. Some said they were an interested observer, but were not really a committed Christian. Or they just couldn't be bothered, didn't think they were good enough, just wanted to be left alone, didn't know how to be involved, and they certainly don't know why being involved is important. Or perhaps they're just too busy. Are you any of those? But why should you be involved in your local church? Firstly, you have talents to be used. When Jesus said to his apostles, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. In John 14 verse 12, it was through the promised Holy Spirit and the impartation of spiritual gifts, that Jesus' words were fulfilled. And the reason that the Holy Spirit imparts spiritual gifts to Christians, is so that the whole body of Christ is built up, for the common good of the church, and so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. These three reasons signify that God wants Christians to be active in service, and not still like stagnant water. That is why we have been given gifts, and if these gifts are not used for God's purposes, then they are utterly useless and meaningless. And these gifts, they are not just the supposedly spectacular gifts, but also the supposedly mundane and boring. Cleaning is as much a spiritual gift as preaching is. And as we are not to neglect our gifts, or let other Christians neglect their gifts. We are to fan the gifts into flame, says Paul, in 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. Much like blowing on embers and stirring them up, will restart the flames of a fire. To do this as Christians, we are to employ the gifts faithfully, and by asking God to continue their development, strengthening and for opportunities to use them. We're to seek gifts that build up others, commands Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 1 to 12. So ask God faithfully for gifts that give opportunity for service to God and to others. Secondly, why? We are dependent upon each other. As Christians, we are dependent upon each other, just as one part of the human body has dependence on another part. That is why we serve each other and use the gifts that are generously given to us by God. As all Christians have gifts, we have a responsibility to discover and to develop them, writes Paul in 1 Timothy 4 verse 14. God has called Christians and equipped them with spiritual gifts, and they are not to be neglected. You are a member of the body of Jesus Christ, the church, if you are a Christian. And if you are not being active, That means the church body where you live is affected adversely. It's like a part of your body failing to do as it should. And the third why? To improve your serve. They are opportunities for Christians to serve other people. Some gifts like teaching, helping or leadership quite possibly are enhancements of natural abilities, while others like faith, healing and miracles are from the Spirit's empowerment alone. In the parable of the talents, Jesus intimates that those who follow him will be judged according to all that they have been given stewardship of. This includes things such as spiritual gifts, acts of service, and material possessions. These are used to accomplish 
or they should be used to accomplish three other things about stewardship. Mission, message and people. And again another why. To follow Jesus. The Christian life is not to be static or inactive. It was never meant to be. The Christian life is to be dynamic. It's to be active. The word servant is key in scripture. It is used at least 500 times in its various derivatives. When a Christian serves, God's honour is released. This is done because service shows the beauty and glory and majesty of Jesus Christ the Lord to those being served and to those watching. That is to be our motive for service. Service is never to be about what you and I can get out of it. When that is the motive, God is not glorified. God's glory, honour, majesty and supremacy are to be the goal of a Christian's life. Spiritual growth comes from serving rather than being served. This is because whatever is given in service of God and others, faith grows and Jesus Christ gives back even more. And Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 25 verses 15 to 30 tells of the rewards for faithful service and the penalties for being faithless. Serving others is a sign that you are trusting in and having faith in God. It is a visible aspect of your invisible faith. Service is the outward expression of your inner beliefs. Serving is an outward expression of your inner faith, an external working out of your inner salvation. Serving God and others is the mark of the spiritually mature or spiritually maturing Christian. And through service, the greatest servant of all, Jesus Christ, is reflected in their life. For Jesus Christ came to serve and to give his very life for other people. As Christians, we are to be as Jesus Christ and to serve. Yet if we are honest, we sometimes feel incapable, just as Moses did. When the church is built up, unity will inevitably prevail and be built up. So if you find you are currently inactive in your local church, then please go and make yourself available to serve there. You are a part of the body, and the body is ailing if you're not working. Ask your pastor or church leader how you can help out in service. By doing so, and submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit who indwells you, the lives of other people could well be changed for God's greater glory because of your acts of service and your acts of service of worship. So don't be a chocolate Christian. Don't be somebody who melts under pressure as chocolate does. Live out your faith. Be serving in your church and give all glory, honour, majesty and praise to the God who died for you in service of you. Thank you.